Um, speaking of applications and apps, uh, Apple had their new uh, WWDC uh, this week. And for all my tech nerds out there, um, you probably have already watched this. But um, basically, WWDC is normally their live event where they it's their worldwide developer conference. So it's pretty typically very heavy on software. And it's, mostly, it's, mostly and it's software, a it's a yeah. conference, so it's literally like uh, I think like a week long, and developers go, and they normally have a live presentation. But this year was the first time they've ne- they haven't done it live because of COVID. So they had like a real the dude they flexed on the production value. Did they did they, did they do like really good? I mean, Apple always it was does a really video good. that was it was just like a presentation, but the I I liked it better because there wasn't all the awkward pauses for all the claps and shit. Like all the fanboys yeah. weren't like. Good. <laughs> the, the, the people in the verge on their computer on Twitter just live day, well, live were, updating everybody. That's how it was, but they were live. It was almost like a live uh, presentation. Like it, it was like a it was like a live viewing. Like it, it wasn't really a live it, thing at all. It was it just was it was like a perm- pre-done video, but it just kept going and playing. It was like a premiere on YouTube. Yeah, yeah it was kind of like a premiere. PS4. I mean, yeah. PS5. Yeah. And and honestly, dude, I liked it better. I think it was cool. I mean, p- obviously, live events are always awesome. And then all the tech reviewers and stuff get to go and, like, get hands-on immediately afterwards. Yeah. But um, it was a really good it was a really good event, and they flexed on their production value, dude. Like, who, props to whoever was, like, in charge of doing that video because um, they killed it. Like, it, it was really good. Um, I saw where they had a, a wheelchair user present at one point. They did actually. Yeah, she was using like a one of those cool power chairs. It was the same chair that our friend Carden uses. Yeah. What's yeah. up, Carden? Thanks for having me on your podcast. Yeah, Carden, um, Carden of Milk. Um, but uh, yeah, she. she uh, there, Yo, yeah, there a, was. She's a, a force to be reckoned with. You know, she got uh, the lights on the top of the King and Queen changed for for like an awareness day for her type of disability. Like oh, that's one, cool. one day they were orange and I was like, that's strange. I wonder why they're orange. And then I saw, um, she posted up, um, a picture with her next to Brandon about, um, F S H or F H S. I don't remember, but basically, uh, it, that's, that's her type of disability. Um, and it was like an awareness day and it was orange. And I was like, Oh, I wondered why they were orange. And she, and she was like, your girl did that. I was, that's like, pretty I cool. was like, no way. Way to go. Cardin. That's awesome. That's awesome. But um, yeah, they they did have a wheelchair user um presenting. I don't remember what she was exactly presenting, but I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but it's really funny. So so they just they they announced like iOS fourteen, which is like the new software and all this stuff. And does it have COVID tracking? Do I have to make sure I wear a COVID tinfoil hat they, every time I? The new Apple Watch software actually has this cool uh, thing where if it senses you washing your hands, it'll put a countdown timer for the amount of time oh, that you need to wash your hands. Cool. Which I thought was pretty cool, honestly. The, the, here's but the it's thing: tracking our biometric Here, data. I don't want Apple to know what my heart rate is and my blood pressure is and my oxygenation. Then don't okay. fucking use it. Here, here's the here's the <laughs> thing that's uh, funny is I don't really fuck with Apple. I don't really use any of their products. I don't really l- enjoy using their products that much. But I respect the fuck out of them and like everything they do because every time they make new innovations, they push the industry forward. And they, that they is the usually, power that they have. They usually are like and the And Richard industry, yeah. used to work for Apple. So it's kind of a funny dichotomy because... And also, I used to own Apple products. Like when the first iPod Touch came out, I had a couple of those. I had an iPod Nano growing up. I even at one point had one of those like uh, iMac or yeah, the, the... What was the... It was the iMac, right? The big bulb one with Color, the colored... I, with like the I, I handle Mac, yeah. on the top. Yeah, I had one of those iMacs. My brother had a MacBook. So like... I, and I had an iPod... Uh, I had an iPod... Um, shuffle yeah. so and i even had one of the touchscreen ipod nanos like i've owned a lot of ipod products in my life that was back in the day when jailbreaking was hot right oh yeah oh, oh yeah dude. i had I'm, i jailbroke my ipod I, touch I miss for sure jailbreaking. jailbreaking was really really fun but one of the, the reason why i stopped jailbreaking was all of the features that i had added on they would add they added on eventually so i'm like i don't need to keep adding in all these things and that, they, that, that's local and native and that's a, a strategy that um, Apple does is they they look into the jailbreak community and see what the popular popular hacks are and then they hire that person as a developer which or which, they outsource it and they fuck over those developers that yeah. happens a lot too for sure yeah but they'll do it in house and 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 completely steal the idea that that definitely I mean, has happened notification center was the biggest example of that a notification center the pull down notification center from iOS 4 to iOS 5 like iOS 
uh, 4.3.5 was solid for a long time, and that was the most jailbreakable iOS. And you could do, like, you could... There's so many things. You could turn that phone into a Batmobile. You could do anything to it. And then... Uh, there was like inside of the jailbreak store it's called Cydia. There was a ton of like really common, obvious like if you're gonna jailbreak, do these things. And one of those things was a notification was center. the notification center. And iOS five comes out, bada bing, bada boom, notification center. Yeah, well, the 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 common theme here is that they definitely have been paying attention to the jailbreak community on this run. Um, and most importantly, they uh. There's a common theme here that is just hilarious. Like as I'm watching it, I mean it's a very, it's always been a common theme of oh haha ha, Apple's copying Android, but it's so funny to me because here was here was the here was the argument back when I was um in high school and I had my first iPod Touch. So that was the thing. I had an iPod Touch and I had a an Android phone. So I had the mm. best of both worlds because I could use all the iPhone apps because iPhones definitely had better apps at the time. And then I could also, and then I was using an Android phone. And here was the, the funny thing that I got back all the time was people that were iPhone users, they would always go, well, Android's just too confusing. You've got all the like widgets on the home screen and blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's so confusing. You've got all these different, th- you, you know, there's, there's too many ways to interact with it so there's too many things i like it simple so now apple has basically taken all the complex things and stacked them on top of this simple interface dude like iphones no longer are intuitive or simple like i it, it's, I, I would it's wait so to funny. get your hands on the software before you say they're not intuitive and the reason dude the like okay let me uh, just, the old iPhones, if I hold it, if I gave my grandma one of the old iPhones, which she does have, there's a home button to go home. That goes home all the time. Yeah. You've got all your apps on the home screen all the time. You can find them very easily. Now there you can uh, in the new iOS, for example, you can hide home screens. You can hide apps finally. They don't have to be sitting on your screen, but they can still be downloaded on your phone. That's been a feature on Android since like 2010. But uh, they delete, finally delete why did they do them. that? They now uh, maybe have a file because, management system too. Yeah, they've had that for a minute, I think. Right? The like iPhone? they had they, uh, on iPad OS. They've had it for a while, for sure. I, but I here, just let me just let me just get through this. Okay? Yeah, sorry. So, so iOS 14. Here's things they've copied from Android. There is now widgets on the home screen, so you can put widgets on your home screen. Um, any not anywhere you want, but you can. It's still like you know how iPhone always like top left aligns everything. It like wiggles. You man. can't even put a widget in the middle. It's got to be either on the right or the left. Um, but you can have widgets. Um, you can also, there is now an app drawer where, for example, on, uh, Android, if you swipe up, you got all your apps in alphabetical order, or you can sort them by category. Now there is that on iPhone, which is hilarious to me. Um, now you can set third party default browsers and third party email client services, which is like, Duh. That's a big why, why now? Walled garden, why baby. Why the fuck now? Walled garden, proprietary software under the guise of security, man. Yep. So um, another thing that is a, a, a big deal is um, now when someone calls you, the uh, calling doesn't take over your whole screen. Oh, it's just a drop down so bar? So it's just a little drop down thing. Again, that's been on Android for a very long time. That was another a thing. thing yeah. um, when you click Siri, it doesn't take over your whole screen. It's just a little discreet thing in the bottom. Google has been doing that for a fat minute with their um, Google Assistant. Um, And then also, uh, Apple Maps finally added a cycling option only in five cities right now. But Google Maps has had cycling since 2010. And Apple Maps just added traffic, which Google Maps has had from the beginning. I thought I, I see traffic all the time on Apple Maps. Or maybe it was like updated traffic, whatever. Like like when they're like, yeah, it's live traffic. I don't know. Uh, And then. The last thing is uh, floating video. So this has been a thing on Android for quite a minute, and it's so funny because there's on Android, that was one of my favorite things is that you can be inside of an app and then leave the app, but still certain elements from that previous app stay on your, on your screen. So for example, if I'm on YouTube, I can watch this video with Allie, and when I press home, the video is still floating around on my screen, and I can do whatever I That's want. That's unheard of in Apple land. 
And now on iOS 14, they are introducing picture in picture, where if you're watching a video and you press home, the video is going to keep playing on your home screen. And the coolest part is that you can also swipe it to the side and it will only have the audio playing, which is dope, mm. um, which is also a thing on here. So they for the example, same thing with a uh, FaceTime. Yeah. Yeah. So like I can press this little headphone button and now I'm just listening to the audio of it. Um, and then also on FaceTime now, you'll be able to be FaceTiming with someone and then go home and the picture in picture will be floating around. You'll be still oh, able to FaceTime. Oh, kind of like when we're on Instagram. Exactly. Um, and it's just so funny. Oh, yeah. And also they added uh, a, a translate app and it's like, oh, yeah, Google Translate has been the standard for translating for so fucking long. Why now? Why in 2020 do I know. you try to make a com competition? I know. What? So this is what, Why? This is what Apple does. Apple is never the first to do anything. Of course not. But the general public tends to think they are because that's when it gets the most traction. In the United States. In the United States, yeah. So so they're not the most popular. They what they phones. do is they they say they, they pay very close attention to the market. They pay close attention to what people like, what people don't like. But they're never gonna be the first to do anything because they want Except for steal your headphone jack. Because they want everyone else to work out all the kinks, like all the betas, all the alphas, all the kinks, all the likes, all the dislikes, what works, what doesn't. So when Apple implements, they're never first, but they're always the most polished version. They're not the best. They're not the most perfect, but they're usually the most polished, meaning like the least buggy, the most intuitive. Well, I just said I burped when I said intuitive. The least buggy, the most intuitive. And I know, kind of going back to your, your intuition argument, like I remember when I went from I would, iPhone 6 I to the- I disagree in the case of the MacBook and uh, switching to USB-C and taking away the auxiliary uh, port, but keep going. Yeah, I'm, t I'm only talking about phones here. Auxiliary uh, port was phone. Anyway, so I, I'm talking about software design because we're talking about WWDC here. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. The, the, swi the swipe up- but You said they're paying- Continue. So they're paying close attention to the market. They're not the first to do anything. Talking, but we're talking about software here. Like we're talking. We're well, you're just, saying Apple. Okay, if you're talking about software, then we're, I mean, then we're talking sure. about WWDC. The touch bar sucks. Yeah. So I'll give you that. It's yeah. the touch bar is software, and it sucks ass. Okay, that's and they were hard, the first to do a touch it's, bar. It's hardware. Um, but Dude, by the way, that interaction <laughs> happens every episode. Andrew, 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 Andrew always say a comment, and then Richard go. Okay. <laughs> you're going. Sorry, because it's like I'm agreeing. I'm like I'm not going to argue back. Um, and then, so like, I remember f thinking the swipe up was so like, like I was like, I want a button. I want to press a button. But then when I learned how to very quickly learned how to use the, the, the swipe up for home button, I was like, oh, this is, I like this way better. This is far superior than a button. So I think sometimes it takes just a little bit to get used to, but once you get used to it, you're, I don't know. I feel like whenever I'm on Apple products, yeah, so specifically it's, software, I feel like a freaking ninja. I, I, I got like, you know, everything. That's everything's, called not. That's not called being intuitive. That's called knowing the software like the back of your hand. That's called knowing and using the software for so long that you feel one with the machine. That's exactly how I feel with my phone and my computer, neither of which are Apple products. And I would say, actually, I have greater control because I have so many things that I can customize with my specific phone that if I gave my phone to my brother, he wouldn't even know those things because they are not specific to Android necessarily. They're specific yeah. to me and my phone and that's that been I customize. A, that's been the pro Android argument for a long time was that yeah. like, hey, you can actually customize this. And that was the reason why people would jailbreak their their iPhones because they wanted to do, they wanted the autonomy, they wanted the freedom, they wanted to do whatever they want with it. But Apple is very much about security and closed garden. And like, you're like, oh, outside email clients took them forever. It's like, you're right. It did take them forever, but no, they had you, to make sure you to could use them. You couldn't make it your default. That's what I'm because saying. Because they're yeah. fucking bitches and they don't want to give up control. Facts. It's like, it has nothing to do with security because they're still letting you do it. They're just not letting it be your primary. Like, but fuck you, you. But you have to like agree to like all these things that are like, yeah. if you're, if you get hacked or you we get live fished in or if there's a virus, like, like it's not the, our fault. We live in 2020. We're giving up freedoms to use free software every single day. Like that's nothing new. And yeah. like the, the, the thing that's just so funny. So just funny know, to I just me know is how that legally every, robust Apple is. There is just this idea in everyone's head that like iPhone is the simple and easy and intuitive software. Well, that's what you iPhone they sell is the you. easy and simple and intuitive software, and it's like nothing about the new stuff for the past probably four generations has been 
it's not, it's only simple and intuitive to everyone because it's been built on this base of simplicity over years and years and years. And if you handed a, an iPhone to a kid, that, yeah, they'd be able to use it instantly. But like in the the way that intuition and intuit like if you have intuition like you 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 would be able to look at something and like automatically know how to use it and i would strongly argue that there isn't uh, with with a lot of the new software on iPhones and even on um iPads and stuff a lot of it is not intuitive it's really cool i commend them for doing it but it's not necessarily intuitive for example swipe down on one side of the top on an iphone you get one thing swipe down on the other side or in the middle and you get another thing like that's completely weird the whole uh the whole, force, the, the, the whole force the whole force touch thing that was another thing that they were first to do anything with pressure sensitive stuff um and it totally flopped the new um iphone se doesn't even have it um because it was so confusing like the force touch it was basically almost like a double or a, a right click for certain things and then for other things it would do like you never were able to predict what it would do unless you just fucking tried it which again is not intuitive you should know well, it was like a, intuitively like a, tap, a press and a long press there's like three yeah and that's the yeah. thing is like the hard the force touch and like the whatever the heck they called the like hard press the pressure press was like so hard to like differentiate between like a long press and that like I, I was always just so confused whenever I picked up an iPhone because I would think I was long pressing but really I was like force pressing or whatever the hell and again it's just not intuitive I don't know I think once you learn it it's very intuitive like yeah but, but once you learn it it's intuitive no that's counter let, let, let me that's let not me what that, that one, means once you spend a couple of hours with it but I guess you're right that does that's the opposite of intuitive intuitive exactly intuitive. that's what I'm saying I commend them but, and I think but that, I and that's why I use Android because it's not necessarily intuitive like it is complicated but once you use it it is so powerful that it becomes the superior thing like premiere pro not very intuitive but i use it for editing because it's the best if i wanted something intuitive i'd use like iMovie or something like that or final but, cut or something or, yeah yeah uh, but like yeah like i i, I if i want Canva. the thing that's simple i'll choose the thing that's simple but i am not choosing the thing that's simple on purpose and it's just so funny when people i'm not and i'm not even saying apple's making this argument anymore they're not on stage going it's the most simple and intuitive operating system on the market they're not saying that but i think that that's still in people's minds that they're like oh yeah android is just so confusing and it's like if you hadn't been learning all these little iterations over the years if you picked up an iphone for the first time and you were still and, and it was like the first thing you'd picked up since an iphone 4 mm. you'd have no idea what the fuck you're doing true you wouldn't even True. like you wouldn't even know how to go home you know, True, yeah, like literally you wouldn't. So I, I just think it's funny. And that that's I, but I commend Apple. Like I commend them yeah. for doing this because these are features that power users have been taking advantage of for so long. And yeah, they're probably going to have them very refined and all this stuff for sure. But that's the funny thing is like anytime you add another layer of complexity, that's when you run into problems. And that's what people always dog like Windows and a Android on. It's like, oh, it's just too, it's too complicated. And that's why everything breaks all the time. It's because like Apple's able to keep everything so simple, but it's like the only way they can like still evolve and innovate is by inherently making things more complicated, I guess, because you're adding more to it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely interesting. Um, I think, you, you touched on a good point where it's like, imagine you didn't have any knowledge of phones, whatever, and then you plop down an iPhone and an Android to, say, Granny at 65. It's like, figure this out. Well, the iPhone, like, 4, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8 even, were very intuitive. There was a layout of all of your apps. You were never going to, like, not know where an app was. Mm -hmm. You press this button at the very bottom. It takes up most of the screen real estate and you press that button and this thing always happens and then they started adding in siri and then well, I mean, they the, started the long touch and the, double, and the double tap and like it's like whenever they take one button do a bunch of things that's when it gets it gets complicated yeah and i'm sorry for like yawning in everybody's face i was up way too late last yeah, night yeah and and the thing is is like i'm not gonna go out here and say that android or samsung or anything is not without its faults bro like there are so many annoying dude you know how many fucking times i accidentally pressed the fucking bixby button on this phone fuck you dude there's a button on this I phone there is a button on this phone that makes my phone do a thing i don't want to do and i've never used it ever and it's always asking me to update bixby and i just press cancel every Every time I press it because I don't want to use Bixby Samsung 
Well, how do you, how do you turn it off? How do you remove you it? You can't. But didn't you just say that this it's is a, a hardware mo- button? A, a, a most robust like. Like, can't you switch that hardware button to mean something else or do something Samsung else? Samsung locks you in. I'm not talking about Android. I'm talking about Samsung. Oh, it's a Samsung. Because that's the thing. It's like Samsung makes the hardware. Android is the software. That, well, that's always been the, the challenge. On a Pixel phone, but, there's no fucking Bixby. There's only a Google Assistant. Yeah. Well, I have a Samsung now, too. Now so you do. I do have a Bixby, and it is, is there a Bi- annoying. Wait, is there a Bixby button, though? I just have to hold the power button. Okay, but it's the power button. This has right. a power button and a Bixby button, dude. Ah! No, but there was remapping of the Bixby button, and then with every like there there'd be some sort of update that would break it. Like they'd yeah. they'd always figure out a way to break it. And and for people out there that are like, oh no, there's a workaround, blah 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 blah. I don't care. My solution is to not press it, and when I do press it, I press cancel. And that's always been the challenge with anything <laughs> Android based slash Windows based is the hardware companies. Um, adding their bloatware. Yeah, well, that's like, why. So the, that, much but bloatware. that's what was so good about the Google Pixel is Google makes Android and Google makes the Pixel phone. So like, there was not. There is no bloatware. bloatware. It's vanilla Android straight out of the box. There's no bullshit from carriers. There's no bullshit from the manufacturers. It's vanilla Android. Hope you enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full episode, you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to the channel, you can click right here. If you want to watch more clips, we got two more right over here.